everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and in this hobby cheating video we're going to talk about flesh again so if you watched my last hobby cheating video the very long one it's like a million years long and you looked at that and you said to yourself you are out of your mind why i i i've got like 50 halberdiers to paint well, they don't have a lot of flesh showing but you get the idea i got a lot of something to paint and i don't have that kind of time to sit there and glaze each individual nook and cranny and build up all these layers you're a madman and i hate you uh that's fair i i accept that so and and after all this series is called hobby cheating so let's get to cheating so if you're not uh if you're you're not you don't need you know the highest quality standard this isn't for competition you need something that looks solid and you want to feel good about what you put on the tabletop well that's what we're here to do today. So that's the kind of flesh we're going to talk about today. So what have I got here? Well, I've got these three little, I don't remember what they're called, acolyte dudes, ferric, ferric acolytes from the Silver Quest Tower. And I thought these guys would be excellent. They got a lot of skin showing and uh, they're, they're real buff. These dudes are nice and ripped. They got some good muscle definition. Should be, they're, they're the perfect candidates for us to, to do this technique on. So, what have I done so far? Uh, well, same as before. We did a little zenithal highlighting. As always, we never put flesh tone over straight black. I'll say it again in every video where I talk about flesh. And I put a nice little mix down of a sort of mid-tone flesh that I like. Right? Okay. So, there's those guys. Alright. So, what are we going to do here? Well, we're going to... Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to quickly uh, whip out some really nice flesh with some really nice tones. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a really light, light flesh tone. So like, for example, I'm going to take this Game Air Pale Flesh, and I'm going to put it together with just a little bit of the dwarf skin. So you can see that's a much darker color, but they both have that pinky tone to them. And that's what I want, because I want these dudes to be nice and, and tan, They've been out in the sun. And, you know, I've said it before. I'll say it again. Um, if, if you're really somebody concerned with speed and you want to get some painting done fast and to a high quality and uh, you didn't buy an airbrush yet, what are you doing? Stop it. Uh, because there's no reason. You can get an airbrush set up relatively cheap for uh, probably less than $200, which is not a small amount of money, but it's also probably cheaper than your army. Uh, yeah, and then you set yourself up for a long time to come to do every other army you run to. And the reality is the, the things it lets you do are just so much faster. Case in point will be this video. Okay, so as usual, so there you go. You can see we've got just a little bit of paint down in the cup there. We're going to mix it up, put the finger over the tip, depress the trigger. Not all the way, just a little bit. You can see it bubble up there. That's fine. Okay, we test. As always, first thing we do is we get some test to make sure we got good flow. Let's move these two guys back. All right, so now we're going to take him at a very high angle. You notice, by the way, I left a lot of the dark shadows there. If you look down there, you can really see the shadows from the zenithal. That was all on purpose because we're going to get this done quick. So we're going to at a high level. You can see how I'm spraying down on him almost directly from the top. Okay. I'm going to hit all his high points, call out those things. Again, I'm rocking it somewhere between like a 90 and let's say like a, oh, I don't know. Like a 90 and a probably 75 degree angle, right? Something like that. So there we go. Now he's got that highlight. You can see how bright he is there, how dark he is still there. That's what we want. So let's do that to the rest of them. Just very quickly, you can see. By the way, if you, if you to to just hit on this airbrush thing again, because I you know why not bang on about it a little more, um, to get them to this point with this flesh, like to get all these guys zenithal and flesh coated, took about fifteen minutes. Uh, so you know, I doubt you could brush paint four models completely from black with flesh over them. Sorry, in fifteen minutes. The airbrush is a great investment, trust me. All right, so we've completely over-highlighted these guys. We've turned them all nice and bright pinky pink. 
Look at how bright that skin is. Oh my goodness, so bright. And that's what we want. Because this technique we're going to be using... Uh, we're going to rely on this over-highlighting. Okay. So, for our next step, we're going to turn to an old friend. Uh, an old classic friend. I'm not going to bother to go back over to the paint desk. We're going to do everything right here in the airbrush booth. Because, like I said, this is about being quick and getting it done. And our old friend we're going to go back to is good old Reichland Flesh Shade, right? You can see that one's almost empty. I don't have a lot left in that one. I have another one similar, so that's fine. Okay. So, blow out the excess paint from the airbrush, run some cleaner through, good to go. Let's go ahead and turn that off. And what we're going to do now is, right here, I'm just going to grab my Reichland Flesh Shade. And what we're going to just go ahead and apply that right over all of them. We're just going to wash them exactly like you normally would. You know, you're going to wash the models. Nothing weird about it. Nothing crazy. We're just going to get in there. Now, we've over-highlighted them first, specifically because we're going to do this. So we're going to get in here. We're going to really get it on there. Okay, now I'm not going to let it pool too crazy. And I want to try to smooth it out so it doesn't chalk up too much on the uh, on the actual flat parts of the muscle. We want it mainly to collect down in the recesses, right? I'm going to just get all the flesh all nice and covered. You'll notice I am not being careful here, right? I am just getting in there. I'm using an old brush. As always, when you use shades and stuff, do use an old brush. Because the way you force this stuff around, there's no reason why you should ruin a nice brush for this. Just use some old crappy brush. Okay. So now this guy has a very pink undertone. Because the red mixed with the sort of pinkish color of the flesh... And by the way, if you don't have those exact colors, just use some kind of like highlighted, fairly pink toned flesh and you'll be good to go. So there he is. Now, he's looking a little more tan already. So let's just set him back there. Let's get the next guy up here. Let's just slap some of that in there and we can keep pushing it around, pushing it around. We don't let it pool. We just keep dragging our brush back over it, right? And we drag our brush around. We get those pools out of there. We push it around some more. Easy peasy. Make sure we get it down into all the cracks. We want all those cracks nice and caught. And we're gonna we're gonna work our way through all three of these guys quite quickly. Again, trying to make sure it doesn't uh, that over that it doesn't pool up over the top and create like streak marks and stuff like that. But we're not being too careful. Where I've got big muscle structures, I might be a little more careful, like across his chest or his back or something. But for the most part, I'm being pretty quick and dirty with this. You notice I'm not really caring either about the rest of the stuff, like his cloth or his, you know, his helm or anything like that. Because who cares? We're going to paint all that separately later. And having a little bit of this red or this flesh on there isn't going to hurt. Whatever color we end up deciding to put over that. These guys are mostly flesh, so hence... Once we get done with it, we'll be mostly done. All right, last guy. Here we go. Same deal. Okay. So we're just going to push this around. And realistically, by the time we get done with this one, that first one's going to be pretty close to dry. Um, I know people always say 15 to 30 minutes. I mean, sure. If you really slapped it on there, which we kind of did. But for the most part, this stuff, it, it dries within a couple minutes. And if you're factory line painting, you know, I'm doing this with three. You can just extend this out to 10 or 20 or 50 or however many you need to do. The point is, don't miss any spots. That's going to be your enemy. If you miss a spot, you're in trouble. Because then you're going to have this really weird thing standing out for like, it's just, just going to be so stark if something didn't get washed. So you really want to make sure you get it all. Okay. All right. So now what have we got? We've got our three guys. Let's take a look. They're looking good. Look at that muscles. The definition is looking solid. They look very red. And that's what we want. Because again, red, pink, these are the undertones of your skin. Why? Because you're full of blood. It's 
pretty straightforward, really. So now what happens is when they dry, you're going to get something like that, right? So now what we'll, all we got to do, you see it's still quite dark underneath and quite bright still on top, but we over highlighted because that shade's going to draw it all together. Now, our next step, okay, and realistically can be our final step, honestly. Um, you can take this as far as you want. But the goal here is to now smooth out all of this shade because part of the problem with the shade is that it does end up with this sort of chalky effect. It doesn't have a high saturation and you can end up with sort of uh, what I'll call like a rough textured look on the skin. And that's not what you want. So what's happening like back here where it dries, right? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to smooth that out. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to go back to our airbrush and we're going to take a nice mid-tone of something we did. So in this case, I'm going to take uh, a little bit of the bronze flesh and a little bit of the elf skin tone. So you can see what those two colors look like. A slightly ruddy tan and a pretty basic flesh. Again, I'm using these colors. Use whatever you want. The key isn't the, this exact brand or color. The key is to have something performing the same function. So a ruddy tan color and a fairly... I would call it just standard mid-tone flesh tone, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to even all this out. Now, I want to let that, I do want to let this dry completely. They're drying a little slower than I would like for this video. So I'm going to pause it for just a second, let them dry. We'll come back and we'll finish these guys up. All right, back in a minute. And we're back. So uh, our... Uh, our shade is dry there, and now it's time to do our next steps. Now, we're going to take this up just a little notch before we go back to the airbrush. So I brought the palette over here, because why not? Well, we're going to take some Drucci Violet. Just a little bit of it, but we don't want to use this straight out of the pot, because this stuff is potent. So we're going to put just a little bit of it, sorry, on our palette here. There we go. Just got a little out there. Now we're going to take just a little water, and we're going to water that down, okay? And what I'm going to do now is just grab these guys, and in the deepest recesses, I'm going to lay in some of that purple. Not a lot. I'm just going to kind of down here where the shadows are and such, you know, under their, like up under the, um, the, the, whatever this is, their skirt they're wearing, I guess. You know, down in the recess, their back. I'm not having a huge effect, but we're going to move that color around just a little bit. Now, this should dry pretty fast because I'm just laying a thin version of it down with some water. We're not going to have a huge change, but mixing in a little of those purple tones can really help to, again, catch that sort of blood look you know, that's under there, really make it feel a little more, uh, just a little bit more alive. Um, it also, because we're putting on the lowest spots where we still had some of the sort of darkness from our zenithal showing through a little bit, we're going to use that to our advantage and kind of turn that a little purple. Get off there. Okay. Again, we're not going too strong. Stay off the high areas if we can. If we get a little in the wrong place, that's okay. We're taking a light touch here. That's the key. All right. So we got that purple laid in. Okay, now we go back to the airbrush. We just got a little bit of an extra tint in there. A little more tonal variation little bit more excitement. So now we're going to take those two mid-tones I mentioned. There they are. We're going to mix them up. Okay. So I'm going to go... Uh, I want these guys to feel, you know, a little more tan. And the deeper the flesh tone, the more translucent it is. So I'm going to go two drops, basically, of the bronze flesh tone for one drop of the regular flesh tone. Seems about right. Again, this isn't an exact science. This isn't baking, it's cooking. You kind of season to taste, right? 
Okay. What I am going to do, however, is thin it. So there's going to be an extra couple drops of thinner in here. I'm actually like one-to-one -one paint to thinner here. Because I want this to be pretty thin. So get that nice and mixed. What I end up with is something like that. Okay? Again, test our flow over here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our airbrush and this, this tip protector here, we're going to unscrew it right off of the airbrush. Okay? Be very careful when you detach this thing. One, you can lose it. And if you do, you're screwed. Two, you're much more susceptible to tip dry, so you got to be very careful. Three, the tip is now exposed. If you bang this against the side of the airbrush booth or something, you're going to bend it. you got to order a new needle. So, with care. But what this does is allow us to be a lot more exact with our lines. Okay? So I didn't depress the trigger all the way because I want very little paint flowing through, and I didn't pull the rock the trigger back all the way. And I can get a pretty fine line out of this thing. See how fine I can get that if I get real close? That's what we're looking for. Okay? All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get in here, and in that same thing I just did, so we're not depressing the trigger all the way, we're not rocking it back all the way. So neither down nor back all the way. And I'm just going to kind of go in and rock it. And I'm just going to very carefully just spray it over. And I'm just going to rock the trigger back and forth to get what I'm aiming at here. And what I'm doing is just, so I'm kind of, I'm again, operating at a higher angle. I'm doing this from above. I'm trying to avoid blowing away all those nice shadows I created. But what it does is it smooths those out, softens those transitions gets rid of those spots on the high parts of the muscle, right? So what we get now is something that gets rid of all that nastiness that builds up with the wash, and we get something much smoother. So if you compare those two, but if we look at their backs, you'll see the difference, right? Okay. So again, same thing. We're going to keep the airbrush moving. We're going to be very light. Make sure we don't get any we don't have any tip dry. We don't. Oh. Come here, little guy. Again, our goal is not to apply the color here. We're just using this like a translucent color. We're just just covering up some of the previous work, just smoothing things out. Doesn't need to be totally perfect. Doesn't need to be totally smooth. Not rocking that trigger down all the way. Not rocking that trigger all the way back. We want nice, fine control. One trick, by the way, if you if you have trouble not depressing it all the way, the trigger all the way, keep your thumb right here. And use that. Use both your fingers to guide the trigger down. Okay? If you're, you bought a dual-action airbrush, use the dual-action. You do not have to push the trigger all the way down every time you depress it. And it will not take much to move that color around. All right, so now we've got them nice and evened out. We blew away any of that kind of nastiness from the uh that was left over from the um from the shade so we're gonna go ahead and get rid of the rest of this for the most part so i'm just gonna blow it out on my piece of paper here but i'm not gonna clean it in the middle okay because instead what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put in some more thinner straight into there so after i've emptied the cup i've still got some paint down in there right i'm gonna take it i'm gonna go straight to my pale flesh I'm just going to go ahead and put like two drops of that pale flesh in there. Now, I'll need to put this little tippy thing back on because I want to mix it up. I'm going to screw that back on real quick. 
Doesn't take much. Never put your finger on the tip without the tip protector on. I'm just going to mix that up. You can see what's going on there. And now what I get is a lighter tone that mixed into that remainder. I'm going to go back, take the tip off again. The lighter and more white a color, by the way, the more likely it is to chalk up. So you got to be careful with this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to finish these guys out. So we want to re-hit the highlights of these muscles. So now we're going to get real careful. I'm going to go in and actually I'm being very precise about these muscles. Now, you're, I mean, an airbrush is not this precise of a tool. So you're going to get some overspray. The key is to work your angles and things like that. It's never going to be absolutely perfect, but we're not aiming for perfect with this. We're aiming for good and fast. We just want to recreate our highlights. Okay, so again, we're just being very careful. We're not rocking the trigger all the way down. We're not rocking the trigger all the way back. Same as before. Second verse, same as the first. And now what we've got, again, we're working at that very high angle. And boom, just like that, we're done. All right? So what do we got now? We've got some nice, bright muscles Got some good low tones, and we're good to go just that fast. So all told, to get these three guys done to, uh, I'd call a certainly very decent tabletop standard, uh, we got lots of nice tonal variation in our flesh. Working with the airbrush, we were able to get it done real quick. Of course, if you wanted to keep going with this, you could. You could take them back to the paint table, and with your brush, just manually clean up a few spaces. You could glaze in a few darker colors or some shades. You could do a hundred things from here. This could be your first step onto a more, much more complicated paint scheme with them. All of that is entirely possible. You can use this as you're done. You can use this as the first step. But all told, this took me, let's see, to go from the primer, which I applied earlier today, because I always let the primer set for a little while. So to go from just the black-gray primer to, do the, to apply the zenithal, to apply the skin tone, to do the first video to here... It was, what, maybe 30, 40 minutes? And that's for these three guys. Uh, not too shabby, because the reality is I could have done a lot more, right? This is great for that batch painting. I did three in that time, or, you know, there's another guy I'm working on here off to the side that I was also painting in that same time. Realistically, if I had 10 guys here, I could have done the same technique with 10, and it would have taken me maybe another five or 10 minutes to add that many more models. So... It's a great technique when you've got a lot of guys you want to get out quickly. You want a nice, smooth tone. you got no brush strokes there, nothing like that. you got a nice, even tone. You've still got a good muscle definition that's visible from a distance, right? You can see that dude is, you can see that dude is cut from across the table. So, there you go. That brings us to the end of that hobby cheating. Uh, so now you've got both very detailed flesh and the quick and dirty method for flesh. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, and as always, we'll see you next time for more Hobby Cheating.